from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Kitisa, the Ten Commandments of Mercy. We have in this Parsha of Kitisa many great mysteries, one of which is the following. Why is it that as Moshe beseeches God and says, God, please come with us. Please show me your glory. God says, yes, I will pass all my greatness before you. And by the way, carve out those tablets, those luchot, and I will write on the Ten Ten Commandments the words. And by the way, here is all my mercy. What's going on? When did God carve those words on those Ten Commandments? What's the relationship between the Ten Commandments, which are to be carved on these tablets, and the 13 principles of mercy that God revealed to him when he was supposed to be giving him the Ten Commandments? What's going on? Let's review the verses, and let's try to figure out the flow of this story. It seems that a certain level of atonement was was reached, and uh, he says, let's go, uh, well, take the people to the land of Israel. So he says, well, you haven't told me. How am I going? Uh, who, who, who are you going to send with me? He says, please, uh, show me your ways. He says, look, I'll go with you. I'll take you. He says, no, you have to go with me directly. He says, how will he know that, that, uh, that you really found, we really found favor in your eyes? So he says, all right, fine. I, I love you. Uh, I, I, I will show you all my glory. I'll, I'll pass over you. And uh, uh, you will not be able uh, to see my face. No one can see me. Uh, uh, but uh, I will pass over you my hand. I will move my hand and you will see my back. But you will, no, you will not see my face. Okay. So, uh, so that's great. So then let's, let's see that revelation where God is going to reveal himself to Moshe. No. After promising to reveal himself to Moshe, he tells him, Moshe, make two tablets, and I'll write on them what I wrote on the first tablet. And get ready in the morning, and no one should be there. So he made the, ten, the, 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 the two tablets, just like the first ones. He gets up in the morning, he goes to the mountain, he takes the two tablets with him. So what do you expect? You expect God to write the, the Ten Commandments on the tablets. But at the other hand, we're also expecting God to reveal himself. So what's going on? So maybe as he's writing the Ten Commandments, he'll also reveal himself. What happens? So we see that God passes over him. And he calls out and says that God is merciful and kind. And he's forbearing. He's got great, and has great kindness and truth. He, he bears the sins for many generations. And bears the different types of sins. And he will, he will not, he will, he will erase the sins. And then Moshe bows down and he says, uh, he, he says, please come with them, and, and he makes a covenant. And, and then what happened? Where, where's the writing of the Ten Commandments? God was supposed to write the Ten Commandments on, on, the, uh, on the tablets. So we have a mixture of conversations. Eruv parshiot yeshkan. On the one hand, we're having a conversation about God revealing himself to Moshe. That conversation is rudely interrupted by the idea that Moshe would write the Ten Commandments. And that conversation is rudely interrupted by the completion of the first conversation that he revealed himself to Moshe. So what's going on? First, I'd like to see a midrash, a midrash lekach tov, and then I'd like to make a radical suggestion as to what truly is going on here in general. Midrash lekach tov says as follows. He says, he says, write, write the Ten Commandments. He says, after all, the first ones are broken. Now, he says, you didn't tell me. Who are you going to send with me? He says, in the days of Joshua, they took the, they took the covenant with them, the Ark of the Covenant, Aron Abrit. In order for Joshua to cross the Jordan, he's going to need to go with the covenant of the, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant. If you don't have the Ark, you don't have God's presence. And he's, he's got to be able to have the Ten Commandments. So he says, you want the Ten Commandments? I'll give you God's presence. The connection? The Ten Commandments represents God's presence. When God reveals himself to Moshe, it's as if he's giving him the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments is a reflection of God being with him. And furthermore, 
the Ten Commandments seem very harsh. After all, there are all these rules. God can, after all, in the Ten Commandments, He, he can put these sins of the fathers on the children for, for generations. There is, after all, there are many laws of Lot Yitzach, Lot Yinaf, Lot Yinov, Lot uh, You can't steal, you can't murder, uh, you can't commit adultery, you can't steal, you can't bear false witness. There are so many commandments. Uh, the, the commandment of Shabbos, very, very severe uh, notion. So the Ten Commandments are, after all, they're not a reflection only of God's mercy. They're a reflection of God's mercy, but also his kindness, but also his being a judge, his very, very strong demands, what the human being must do. But what happened? When we got the Ten Commandments the first time, we couldn't bear it. We couldn't even bear the very first commandment, the second commandment, to have no other gods, not to craft any other gods. We failed the test of the first Ten Commandments. So... God comes and He says, I'm going to write on those ca- tablets. And the essence of what I'm writing, of course, the words are the same. as The words are the same as they were in the first Ten Commandments. The words, of, I am the Lord your God, I took you out of Egypt, and Shabbat, and, and honoring the parents, and don't steal, and etc., etc. But the essence of the Ten Commandments, the spirit in which the Second Commandments were given, were the spirit of mercy. I'm giving you these commandments, which include all the 613 commandments, but the spirit in which it's given is that God is merciful. He's merciful before you sin. Hashem, Hashem, He's merciful after you sin. And you can live with these commandments. You can, you, you, this can be in your midst. This can go with you. Commandments as they are. I'm not sure you can survive with that. Oh, you'll have the golden calf and it'll all be over. But commandments that come with mercy. Who, as He's saying, go ahead, I'm going to write the commandments. He gives them mercy. He shows them mercy. God's showing mercy is equivalent to the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments here are reflected in the mercy which comes with them. There's one God, but if if, if you have a golden calf, we'll forgive you and we'll we'll wait for a later day to punish you. Honor your parents, but somehow if it doesn't quite work out, we'll, we'll, we'll let you... Uh, mature a little bit. Maybe later you'll appreciate your parents a little more. Uh, don't kill, but if the Jewish people, God forbid, guilty of uh, murder, maybe in later generations they could still uh, receive atonement. The Ten Commandments are accompanied with a sense of mercy. How is there an interruption between and, and a flow between God's going to reveal Himself, God's going to give the Ten Commandments? Which one is it? He promises the Ten Commandments and He gets mercy. He promises mercy and He gets the Ten Commandments. What's going on? The commandments here are given out of a spirit of mercy. There are laws in Judaism. There are specific things we're to do. But lest anyone think that this is a, a religion of law, it's a, it's a harsh, fatherly uh, commandments. It's a, it's, a, it's a religion of, of harshness. The Ten Commandments, the second time, the real time, the one under which we live, the commandments were given out of a spirit of mercy, understanding that as he's writing those Ten Commandments, he's also telling him, God is merciful and kind, merciful and kind. And that, yes, under those circumstances, we can survive the Ten Commandments. We can thrive with them. We can, we can try them, we can fail, we can try again. And with that, we can rise up again and we can conquer the land of Israel and we can go with the Spirit of God, which will be with us when we, when we do that tshuva, when we repent. God will come to us again, as He does here, better and closer to Moshe than He ever was, after the sin of the golden calf, after the tshuva, after the prayers. We can get even closer. And with this, we have solved the mystery. What's the connection between the Ten Commandments, and the revelation of God's mercy, the revelation of God's mercy in the Ten Commandments. The Torah tells us that despite all the laws, it goes together hand in hand with the great mercy of God. And with that, the Jewish people can indeed get close to God with an understanding and a goal of trying to achieve these commandments. We can survive, we can march forward to the land of Israel. And we can, if we're lucky, receive some glimpse of God's glory the glory that despite all the laws that He asks from us, He can still bear to live with us because He's waiting for our tshuva. He keeps that for generations. He's erech apayim. He's waiting. He's waiting for us to do tshuva, to repent. So indeed, once again, we can get closer to Him than ever. 
Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sfar Beth Lenneth Congregation here in Memphis, Tennessee. Join us each week for our discussions of the Parsha. And you're welcome to review past uh, archives of past Parshiot as well. Thank you to Jason Lefkowitz for making today's presentation possible. We learn again with the Echanishmas in memory of my father, Reb Baruch, Reb Chaim Shmuel, Harini Kaparat Mishkavo, Yizichro Baruch, may his memory be a blessing. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. <laughs>